You know, I had some expectations about what I might find in this thing, and I was totally wrong. There is some unexpected stuff in here. Executives at Harbor Freight are trying to step up their game. And this is one of the tools they're using to do that. This is the new Hercules brand angle grinder. This is one of the first tools released under Harbor Freight's new Hercules line, which is a higher priced line aimed at competing with established brands like DeWalt. Harbor Freight actually names DeWalt in their advertising for this grinder. I bought this so I could tear it apart, see how well it's made, and compare it to some other Harbor Freight grinders. Here's what we're going to compare in this video. The $10 super cheap grinder, the sort of cheap $24 paddle switch grinder, and the new big boy, the Hercules brand grinder, which cost me 40 bucks. And if you want a closer look at these two other grinders, check out my other videos, because I already tore both of them apart. Just looking at this, you can see some differences from the cheaper grinders. Number one is a feature that I really like. They upgraded to a quick release guard. The other two have guards that you have to use a Phillips screwdriver to adjust them. On this one, you just unlock it, move it, and lock it back down. Here are two of the accessories that come with this grinder. You get this Hercules branded grinding wheel and this handle, which is much nicer than the handles on these cheaper grinders. It's made of nylon reinforced with glass fibers and it has these thermoplastic elastomer, these rubberized areas that make it a little bit easier to hold on to. All three of these grinders have a cover on the back. You can remove it with a single screw to access the brushes. Looking at the brush holders, on the cheapest grinder, we just have simple stamped steel here. On the mid-price grinder, we have stamped brass, but it's awfully flimsy. Here, when we step up to the Hercules, you also have stamped brass, but look, it's significantly thicker here. Both of the cheaper grinders use a basic brush design. It looks like this. This is the spring that keeps pressure on the brush. When we go to the Hercules, we see a different and a more complex design. You have this coiled spring here, which will be able to exert more consistent pressure on the brush here and hold it down on the commutator. We have crimp on spade connectors here and heat shrink tubing, just like we see in the other grinders. Next, I'm going to pull out the switch here and we'll take a look at the brand. Okay, th this is my first big surprise in this teardown. This is a name brand switch. This is a Marquardt, which is a German company. Uh, the switch has a good action and it has a boot here to keep debris from getting in there. I was expecting something more like we see on the other grinder here, which is a Hont brand switch. Both the cheaper grinders use this. It actually has a pretty good action. Hont is a Chinese company. They make all kinds of things. Uh, you can also see we have a boot here to protect from debris getting into the switch. But they really went a step above here with a top shelf name brand part. Here we have the brush out of the $24 paddle switch grinder and you can see there's a lot more meat on the Hercules. Both of these are brand new so it's not like this one has been worn significantly. Once these screws are out we should be able to pull off the gear case and take out the rotor. This setup is different and not what I expected. As I'll show you soon this is not how the other grinders are assembled. Guys, real quick here. Everything you've seen on this channel, including tools like these angle grinders, have been purchased by me with my own hard-earned buckaroos. The only way I can do that without going broke is with YouTube views and ad revenue. So if you like these videos, please share them on places like forums and social media, wherever there are people who might like them. This is a relatively new channel, and most people don't know about it. Looking at the rotors, and again, we can see some details and steps on the Hercules that are not included on the cheaper grinders. First of all, they tightly wrap the windings in this high temperature string, then they dip the rotor, and that resin helps hold the windings together and just secure them a little better because vibration can wear through the insulation, break a wire, cause the rotor to fail. On the other two, they did dip the windings. They also reinforced the connection between the windings and the commutator here on the Hercules. This is epoxy here, and that's again because this is a point where the vibrations can cause the windings to break free of the commutator, and that's another failure point. This epoxy just helps reinforce that joint. 
All right, it's time to nerd out on some bearings. These are so critical in tools like grinders because of the high speed of the motors. I checked the gear ratios on these, and on each of them, it's just over three to one. That means if the output is spinning at 10,000 RPM or more, which is what these grinders claim, although that might be an exaggeration, but if they are spinning at that kind of speed, you're talking about the motor spinning at 30,000 RPM or more. If you don't put a decent bear in in that kind of situation, you've created an obvious failure point. So let's take a look at these bearings. Starting with the $10 grinder, we can see KG for KG International, which is actually not a terrible brand, but this is only a shielded bearing. The shield here is crimped around the outer race, but there is no seal or anything between the shield and the inner race. So this is an entry point for debris. On a grinder, by definition, you're creating a lot of debris because you're grinding. So this is a place where junk can get in there and wear out the bearing. Stepping up to the paddle switch grinder, and we have a fully sealed bearing, which is nice, but it's a complete no-name brand. When we go up to the Hercules, we see another sealed bearing. It's a little bit smaller, and the brand is CW. This is a Chinese bearing company, but reading about them, they are way more reputable than the real no-name Chinese companies. They have multiple factories in China and a factory in Germany. Uh, they have engineering facilities in places like Europe and the U.S., and they even supply bearings to companies like Bosch and the automakers. So yes, this is a Chinese company, but it looks like it's a sizable, advanced company. Uh, if they wanted to cut costs, they definitely could have gone to a cheaper bearing here. Let's talk about the cords for just a moment. Both of the cheaper grinders use a no-name SJT cord. That means junior service with a thermoplastic jacket, probably something like PVC. And this is what you'll find on a lot of lower-priced power tools. The Hercules has an SJ cord. That lack of a T means instead of thermoplastic, it has thermoset rubber, and it's a name brand, Leone. SJ cord has better flexibility in some temperatures, and it's overall just kind of a heavier duty, tougher material. Uh, Leone says they use EPDM rubber in their SJ cords, so this is the good stuff. The Hercules also has thicker wires, a 16 gauge here versus 18 gauge on the cheaper grinders. So the Hercules has a significantly nicer cord, and it also has a much nicer cord protector. This boot here prevents the cord from really sharply kinking over, which is a surefire way to make a cord fail quickly. It feels to me like it's silicone, and it's really big and beefy. Check it out compared to the one on this $10 grinder. Look at that dinky little guy. This also feels like it's uh, nitrile rubber. Not quite as tough in this application as the silicone here. It's sort of like the turducken of tools. The deeper I get into this thing, the more surprises I find. And one of the surprises we can see right here. The field winding has been completely coated in epoxy. Just like on the rotor, that's being used to help hold the windings together and prevent vibration from breaking a wire and causing a failure. I think I forgot to mention earlier that they use PA6 GF30 in the housing. That's nylon with 30% glass fibers. That's a completely normal choice for a tool like this. There's nothing wrong with that. And they did not skimp on the material. This is a really beefy housing. It's really sturdy and stiff. I pulled the pinion off the shaft here to take a look at this front bearing. And again, it's a CW brand, fully sealed bearing. This is kind of an interesting design. It's two-piece versus the single-piece gear case on the other grinders. I have a few guesses why that might be, but to keep the video short, I won't bore you with those right now. There still is a lot we can see in here. This is a pretty complex casting. When you look at all the details included in here, and there's you know not very much flashing, there are no voids or problem in the casting, they did a good job. It's also been machined here on this face. You can see it's been turned, and it's pretty clean machine work. It's a little bit sharp around some of the edges here, but normally you wouldn't be groping around in here unless you're doing something like this, taking it apart. Another nice detail, there's a rubber seal here to help keep the grease in the gear case. On the other grinders, they just rely on the bearing to hold in the grease. The first thing I noticed when I opened this up is another nice detail that they took the time to add. We have another seal here to help keep the grease in the gear case. Neither of the cheaper grinders have any kind of seal. It's just the metal-to-metal -metal contact here that holds in the grease. 
We have a needle bearing here that supports the top of the shaft that goes through the crown gear. On some really cheap grinders, they don't use a bearing here. They just use a simple bushing. Uh, on this one, you can see that it's a made in China bearing, but it's a name brand, INA. Both of the uh, other cheap grinders I have here also have needle bearings, but they are not name brands. It looks like the design on this is a little bit different than the other two cheap grinders. On those, there's a snap ring here that holds the gear in place. On this one, it looks like it's pressed together. I tried to get it apart, but my pullers are too chunky to fit under here and pull off the gear. So I think we're just gonna have to leave it together and see what we can see. I think I spoke too soon. It looks like some gentle prying may be able to get this gear off the shaft. You can see I got a little ham-fisted here with my attempt to remove the gear with that puller. I broke this little channel that holds the O-ring. It looks like the grinder will still go together and work fine, but uh, that's not very good on my part. Here we have the gears out of all three of the grinders. They're all fully machined gears because we can clearly see the machining marks. Some grinders use powdered metal gears. On the Hercules, all throughout the grinder, the machine work is just consistently cleaner and finer, and we can see that here on the gear as well. Hopefully the camera can pick up some of these details, because we have just very fine and consistent work here on the face of the gear that continues into the teeth. These three detents are all very cleanly and very well machined. We go up to the paddle switch grinder and the machine work is, is just rougher. You can see little ridges here around the detents and the machining marks here on the face where it has been turned are just not as fine. Head over to the $10 grinder and it's the same, only slightly worse. We have bigger ridges here around the detents, just coarser machine work everywhere. I was just hitting all three of these gears with a file. And the file definitely bites most easily into the $10 grinder gear, meaning this one is the softest. Both of these, it skates across pretty well, so they're decently hardened. I don't notice a major difference between either of these. What I was expecting to find in this is maybe a couple updates over the regular Harbor Freight grinders, but nothing too fancy. But what I found is that pretty much every detail here is a pretty big step up. We've got a better cord, a name brand switch, pretty good bearings, they used epoxy in the motor, and the machine work is all very nicely and very cleanly done. In almost every place, uh, they did not cut cost when they could have. They spent a little extra on the nice details. This is made in China, but it's made in China pretty darn well. But I still see kind of a shortfall in this. It only has the regular 90-day Harbor Freight warranty. When I bought it, they asked if I wanted to step up to a two-year extended warranty for an extra 20 bucks. But if you do that, you're basically approaching the price of something like a low-end DeWalt grinder. So if you're someone who gets warm, fuzzy feelings from a long warranty, maybe this isn't for you. And speaking of DeWalt, Harbor Freight compares this grinder to a low-end DeWalt grinder in their advertising. I'm gonna try to get my claws on one of those DeWalt's and we'll tear it apart and see how it compares. Until then, hit the like button if you like this video, share it with anyone you know who might like it, and thanks for watching.